Anthony Fox once said, the reality about transportation is that it is future oriented. If we are planning for what we have, we are behind the curve. Keep this in mind as we discuss today our part two in the China AI dominance, mainly in the transportation sector. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. As part two of our, of our series on China, we're really looking at the planning that's been going on and how the plans have come to fruition. Transportation in China is phenomenally good. And what we're looking at in the United States is, Dallas is a perfect example. The estimates are in terms of, of, of public transportation and in terms of roads and highways, we're 26 years behind where we need to be to have good traffic flow. And the, road, the highways here are torn up constantly. Wow. Mm. Well, that is indeed, uh, Ross. There is now the estimation is that the next 30 years is going to see a massive uh, advancements in the transportation using technology. And this is where the AI comes in. And that's why we're going to focus in this show about China's transportation sector. How do you see this playing out? Well, I can see that the integration of the AI into the transportation system in China is going to just push it forward faster than anticipated. And to give just an example of we're not going to be talking about airplanes here, even though China is planning to be self-sufficient in manufacturing its own uh, 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 planes. About 4,000 flights a day. They use a lot of planes. You can just see. Uh, we're going to focus in this uh, show today about the bullet train. And why is that important? It's because AI technology is going to be integrated part of it and also to highlight, uh, just for our viewers, to highlight to our viewers how fast China is willing to uh, or wanting to connect its the East with the West. And what comes with that is the transportation of goods and what that does to an economy because as you and I know and I am sure our viewers know that if you have a good transportation system it tends to have an impact on economic uh, 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 output. We have the perfect example of the highway and transportation construction after World War II. It was originally designed so they could move military equipment back and forth but when the highway system went in all of a sudden the economy started to boom everything from tractor trailers to transportation for vacations and just going to see people. The massive highway system in the United States is a direct result of that ideology and the, the economic impact has been phenomenal. Yeah. Well that's correct Russ and this is what China is doing. What well, apparently is that the transportation system uh, allowed China now to integrate certain neighborhoods uh, or neighboring cities that is uh, like like even from the Yangtze River to there is another location i believe the uh the uh, uh pearl delta oh yeah. yeah so all those distances there are four distances but now with the mode of transportation using the bullet train that goes at a faster speed with the integration of the ai it allowing now those countries to be within proximity it was astonishing we were traveling from beijing to xi'an and we were hitting 300 kilometers per hour and a bullet train. Remarkable smoothness. We couldn't even feel the acceleration or the deceleration in that train. It was so well done. Mm -hmm. And our one of our guides, at the end of the day, he said, well, you know, the day is done and I live 200 miles away. Wow. He got on a bullet train, was there in an hour. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, because I could afford to live there, I cannot afford to live in Shanghai. Yeah. And that's one of the advantages of this, uh, uh, the bullet train uh, that China is embarking on. Uh, one thing I need to mention to our viewers, just for us to share with our viewers, is that China 
intends to spend about 230 billion dollars on the technology to improve the bullet trains which means what that the ai part of, of, of that technology is going to be an integral part of the transportation system. So, and mind you that uh, how China started on all this, it was through World War, uh, uh, the World Bank rather. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it was the West that implemented certain uh, strategies for that. China learned from that. But now China is self-sufficient. As a matter of fact, China now is exporting that technology to three markets. Thailand, Malaysia, and Russia. It's not surprising. Mm -hmm. Their system is magnificent. The, the bullet trains I rode in Europe, China had, the, the, the European trains had nothing over the bullet trains of China. Absolutely nothing. And the, and the bullet trains in China were always on time. Whereas the airplanes are not. Yeah, well that's why you, you've been in China and you saw how much the uh, how many bullet trains are moving a day. Oh my God! Yeah. So it was. There were the, the train stations were massive, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And at any given time, there might be twenty or thirty trains pulling out or wow. coming in. And as part of a system of four thousand trains, these bullet trains are happening in China every day. Four thousand. Wow, that's a lot. So can you just imagine the, 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 uh, the travelers or, or the customers, that is whatever you want to call them, traveling from one city to the next and what it does to the economy oh, of the absolutely. city. So you can just see where it's going. I can now understand why, for example, uh, with, the, with the, uh, the, the Chinese officials thinking in terms of the next five years, the next 10 years, because this is what they are planning on, improving on the transportation system to facilitate the movement of people from the east to the west, but also the movement of goods. And you and I know, whenever there is a good transportation system, the economic output is always good. And their planning has been magnificent. We did a consulting project for an, for an American company that was helping them in the early stages of this thing. Boy, they've taken off since then yeah. Wow, in the business. It's interesting. So where do you well, see all this is going, Russ? with China moving into this direction of integrating AI into the transportation system and how that's going to give China leverage, especially if you tie this to BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, to the 6G, <laughs> the digital one, and uh, what do you think? Well, it certainly, is going to, it certainly is continuing to give China uh, fantastic, op fantastic advantages moving people and goods that fast, uh, connecting their country in a way that the United States cannot be connected. Uh, you know, to go from Beijing to far west China, that's a long way, it's a 10 hour trip on a bullet train. Uh -huh. And the history of that is that there was real contention from, the, from western China saying, you know, we're, you really forget about us, you don't care about us, we think we're going to really cause trouble. Only they were already causing trouble. Xi Jinping said, taken care of. And they built that thing. And it's an economic loss right now. But it saved yeah. all that fighting and fuming and so on going on in Western China. Because now they're connected. They're connected to the mainland. Yeah, that's an interesting approach. And, and rightly so, can you imagine just for us here in, in the United States, uh, if, if, if you, the viewer, wanted, you live in New York, for example, and you want to go to LA, you can just hop on a bullet train and within about uh, 15 hours, 12 hours, maybe you'll be there. You could do it overnight. Yeah. And still, the question is why in the United States we don't have any? And that's more political than anything else. And we're not going to get into that about we know how it is, how the system is. Here's really the conclusion. China is moving ahead rapidly with transportation and we're seeing impressive economic growth and the transportation system is a major con contributor to that. Expertise, goods and services, able to move r rapidly around the country. And what we're seeing is the United States is falling far behind. We want to again thank you for the multitude of, co of comments that you're sending to us and suggestions for new shows.
Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye bye.